So I, when I pick projects and when I do things, I'm always looking for an overlap of interest and utility. So mm. I don't like picking something that's purely interested. I think I'm never going to use this later. And even just from a purely interested standpoint, because I think uh, projects where you don't have anything meaty that it gets applied to are also, they also tend to get untethered. So I think mm. it's hard to sustain interest if you don't have some concrete source of rewards that you could apply to and, and and having a job is one way of doing that so if you're learning something for professional reasons that's obviously important but i think even just like if you're learning something and there's no way you can get anything out of it i think it's hard to so i think you kind of need cool. both you need to have you need to have an intrinsic interest to it where it's just like this stuff is cool <laughs> and then you have mm -hmm. to be like well here's what i would use it for and the using it for can be very concrete, like it's the skill that I'm going to get this job with, or it can be kind of abstract that it can be like, well, obviously philosophy, I'm going to use this to live better. Or, um, you know, it could even be, well, I want to learn this subject so that I can understand this other thing that I care about better and has that utility in that way. And so I think you do need both. I think they're both important. I think the way I would sort of phrase that question or sort of step back a second is I think what, what a lot of people, the way they think about it is, I have these fixed sets of interests that I've been kind of given by default. So I have maybe three things that I'm interested in. I don't want to say it that mm. limitedly, but I think a lot of people think that way. I'm interested mm. in these three things and this is what I want to do. And, and maybe that sucks if those three things maybe don't lead to great job outcomes. The way I want to think about it is actually kind of to ask the opposite question of well, why are you interested in more things? And so I think mm -hmm. for a lot of us, we don't have interests in a subject because of this sort of internalized negative emotions we have associated with it. So we're not interested in math, not because math couldn't be interesting to us, but because we don't feel like we're good at it. We don't mm. feel like when we were in that math class, they made us feel dumb and oh, there's all those numbers and I couldn't keep track of it. And it was so hard and it was so confusing and frustrating. And I couldn't see what we were using it for and blah, 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 blah. And all these internalized, and maybe this isn't even happening at a conscious level. I'm not even saying that you, you deliberately make this kind of, um, observation it could even just oh you know you just get a little bit of like you know you had some bad experiences and you just want to stay away from that and so i don't want to say you need to rush headlong into everything that you hate either i think there's plenty of middle ground mm. but i think one of the things that i would sort of stress is that try to invest in the process of learning and and overcoming some of these weaknesses not merely so that you can be good at things but also so that you can expand the range of things that you are interested in. <laughs> so mm. if, you know, a, a good example of this is that uh, if, if you've never really learned a language before um, and you've never done anything like the kind of project that I've described, it's often the case is like, I'm sort of interested in learning a language, and maybe not, right? Like, cause maybe you have some experience in high school and then you go and you try to learn a language and maybe you can actually speak it with someone and suddenly it clicks that not only do you want to continue to learn that language, but often you want to learn lots of languages. And so suddenly this kind of field of interest for you has opened up that was sort of hidden before. It, you weren't sure why you were interested. Like, yeah, I don't really care about that because it was sort of covered over. And so I think for a lot of us, most of our possible things that we could be super excited about in life are covered over because of these sort of bad formative experiences. And it isn't to say that you have to do everything you hate, but it is to say that I think the art of learning and art of getting better at learning is also about opening new horizons. So not just picking those three things that you really like and just doing those, but figuring out how you could really like philosophy or history or math or sculpting or painting or snowboarding or, or anything that maybe kind of you don't have that excitement about right now. So I think our flexibility and interest is, is much more malleable than it first appears. Yeah. 